What's up guys, welcome back to the Run With Jay channel. So after much anticipation and a couple months of delay from Nike, we finally have the release of the Nike Zoom X Invincible Run Flynet. So in this video, we're gonna test this shoe out, see how the shoe is, and see how it compares to other shoes in the Nike lineup. So if this is your first time to the channel, welcome. Please hit that like and subscribe button as well as the bell for notifications. And to all my returning subscribers, thank you so much for your contribution and support. So let's get this review started. So as usual, we'll get started with the specs. So this shoe was supposed to be released in early January alongside with the Nike Infinity Run 2. However, with COVID and a couple of delays from Nike, the shoe finally was able to come out around March 12th of this year. So this shoe costs $180, which is pretty pricey for a regular training shoe. It's on par with Nike's Temple Next% Percent or the Pegasus Turbo 2. Um, line as well as the zoom fly you know three line but that costs 160 dollars so it's the price is up there um, compared to your you know average training shoe so the weight of this shoe is about 9.7 ounces for a size eight and a half um, so it's not too heavy but it's not too light for your standard training shoe it weighs just a tad more than the nike infinity run uh, two that comes in about 9.5 ounces for it also 8.5 as well So this shoe has about a 9 millimeter offset with a 27.6 in the forefoot and 36.6 in the heel and this colorway here is the cyber blue colorway There's about two other colors that are released originally the black and uh, red one as well as the black and white one and for the women, they have similar about three colorways as well for the initial release. So this shoe is made up of a few important components. You have the Nike uh, mesh upper here, which is pretty standard from Nike. This is very breathable and um, you know, it feels very comfortable and didn't have any issues with hot spots. Um, in the midsole, you have the prize here, this huge amount of Zoom X foam that everybody was waiting for. There's a big chunk of foam and it definitely contributes to how soft and cushion the shoe is while running and on the back of the shoe you have a heel counter as well to give you more stability and there's also a heel clip inside of the shoe that's embedded within the fly net to provide you even more support and stability which is very nice on the out outsole you have this waffle studded design which gives you great traction i didn't have any issues with slipping uh, and from the wear of this shoe, looks like it should last a while. It doesn't even look like I wore it. So this shoe, um, in terms of durability, looks like it'll last a while, at least three to 500 miles, in my opinion. Similar to the React Nike Infinity Run 2 that was released. Um, on the first version of Infinity Run, I got almost 650 miles in that shoe. So it should definitely last a while. And after a few runs in the shoe, you can see some creasing in the Zoom X foam. So that should be normal, but it's not a big deal. Um, there's a, a nice neoprene padded tongue on the top which is very comfortable and has a lot of cushion and also in the heel area there's plenty of cushion and padding as well so for people that likes max comfort and cushioning uh, this shoe probably is definitely for you so before the shoe came out uh, in 2021 there was a lot of hype and speculations about this shoe and what it would be would it be like a marathon training companion shoe or you know a speed shoe we really didn't know but when we saw the specs of the shoe i was kind of surprised about one thing was with the weight of the shoe um, it's a little bit heavy you know compared to some of the lightweight like pegasus turbo 2 shoe that came out that's like a marathon training companion and you can also use that for tempo runs uh, it's not on par with like the zoom fly 3 which has you know a uh, a plate in the shoe uh, for marathon training this shoe is kind of a little bit different i think nike went outside the box and created a shoe that could be used to fit the gap for people that want to do long runs but also you can use it for recovery runs uh, while having the discomfort and uh, cushion and stability in a shoe uh, while most other training or marathon uh, shoes are has plates in it so it's a little bit more stiffer and more rougher um, on your feet so this is a definitely the opposite of it it'll provide a ton of comfort and cushion for people that like to put in long miles and also that uh, people that want to shoot for stability or just you know a recovery day so it's very flexible you know a lot of runners really like the zoom x foam so a lot of people wonder what a shoe would be like with all zoom x foam so you definitely have it here from nike and nike you know reduce the amount of uh, padding or cushion between the foam to your feet 
so the insole is very thin and so you're basically just really um, using the foam for comfort and cushion so Nike try to minimize the things that go between you or foot and the cushion uh, to make this shoe uh, give you max cushion and stability while you're running in it. So first run in this shoe, uh, very comfortable, definitely for sure. I think this is Nike's softest and most comfortable shoe that they've ever, you know, made in my opinion that I've tried on. You know, initially I thought the Infinity Run was, you know, that shoe was super soft and comfortable. But after trying this, this puts it on a whole different level. And the Infinity Run is a little bit more stiffer. It's more rigid. It isn't as soft with the React foam compared to the Zoom X foam. As soon as you put your foot in, even start walking, you can just feel like the shoe is like a gel kind of like feeling. It's very different, very interesting. Um, I kind of compare it to the um, New Balance RC Elite with how you know squishy and bouncy that shoe is. And this shoe is almost on par with that. Um, it's a very different feeling. Some people might not, might not like the feeling of you know very soft and squishy, kind of like that stiffer, stiffness um, for support. But you know, I think Nike balanced out the foam with the squishiness with all of the stability a feature that they added into the shoe. So it makes like makes it a more well-rounded shoe. And this shoe, and all similar to the Infinity Run, is made to help prevent injuries for athletes to keep them running on the road longer. So that's why you see a lot of the stability features in this shoe. Um, however, this is just full Zoom Zoom X foam. So um, you know, this is just a little bit, it's kind of different from the Infinity Run, but in the same way, uh, if you prefer a super soft max cushion shoe, this would be it. The Infinity Run, in my opinion, is also a great recovery and long distance shoe. Uh, however, that shoe just feels a little bit more, I guess, rigid and stiffer, definitely compared to the Invincible Run. So where does this shoe compare to all of the other Nike shoes that are out there? There's just so many choices right now that you can pick from. I mean, the price range of $180, you're looking at marathon, you know, uh, training shoes like the Tempo Next Percent or the Zoom Fly 3 or the Pegasus Turbo 2 line. They're all very, you know, good shoes and some, most of those are used for fast paces. Um, the Tempo Next Percent weighs almost the same as this shoe. Um, it's got those Zoom AirPods in the front and also the Zoom X, uh, the React uh, and Zoom X foam in the back of the shoe. So this shoe is full Zoom X, so it's a very different feeling. Um, I feel like this would be perfect to fit in on one of those long run recovery days. And then you can use the Tempo Next Percent for maybe tempo runs or quicker long distance runs, uh, in my opinion. And that shoe does have a nylon plate in it, so it feels a little bit, I guess, rougher or stiffer compared to the Zoom X foam, which is a straight, straight up foam that you're running on. So that's a different feeling. And between this and an Infinity Run, they're both made for recovery and not really for fast paced runs. Um, the Infinity Run is a great shoe that'll last you a long time. Um, the React foam's a little bit more harder compared to the Zoom X foam. Um, they're both great shoes. Infinity Run 2, when it came out, definitely you know, surprised me. They made great changes to the upper, so it's also a very comfortable shoe uh, as well in its own right. And that, however, after try, <laughs> trying the Zoom X foam, I think I have a new favorite uh, recovery and uh, slow running shoe. So it's, this shoe is about $20 more compared to the 160 of the Infinity Run. So if you're a person that doesn't really like super soft, squishy shoes, then I think the Infinity Run would be the better choice, in my opinion. Um, this shoe is not going to replace any tempo runs or fast pace or racing shoe. Uh, it's just to be a great companion to fit in for people that like a soft, uh, very cushioned recovery, uh, long distance shoe. And then you're not worried about pace or anything. So this can definitely fit the bill. And this shoe, you know, initially when you pick it up, feels a little bit bulky, almost like the Nike React Miler in terms of design. Um, the color is very similar as well. Um, it's got max cushion and padding, very different from like you say the Pegasus Turbo 2, which is very stripped down. Hence the weight is super light on the Pegasus Turbo 2, and that's meant for maybe, you know, faster pace runs. This has just tons of cushion and padding. Um, so, you know, it's not, it's not, it adds to, contributes to the weight of the shoe, but overall, you know, if you wanted to do quick or faster pace runs, you can, but I feel like this shoe is not intended for that purpose. So with that being said, so the Nike Zoom X Invincible Run is a great shoe that fits the gap for people that want a max cushion, super soft and, you know, springy shoe that Nike uh, doesn't have yet. If you're a person that likes a more stiffer shoe, then I would definitely go with the Infinity Run. 
instead that shoe is also very comfortable but the foam is with the react foam on there it's a little bit more rigid and stiffer now that i have tried the zoom x foam with this you know a lot of fans wanted all zoom x foam and you got it here and this shoe definitely doesn't disappoint uh, 180 dollars is a little bit more expensive you know um, compared to the other uh, shoes out there like the infinity run or the pegasus 37. um honestly you know if money isn't an issue to you i definitely recommend this shoe uh, for people that are just starting out to run or beginners because it's very forgiving. It's got a lot of stability features to help, you know, learn your running form uh, better. And it's also got max cushion, you know, for people that, you know, you want a very cushioned shoe. And this shoe definitely has all of that. So, you know, I think this will change up my current lineup for shoes. For my racing shoes, obviously, I'll have the Vaporfly and the Alpha Fly. Uh, for Temple Runs, I'll still use the, you know, 4% that I still have. I'll throw in the Pegasus Turbo 2 and maybe the Temple Next Percent. And for slow recovery runs, I'll definitely pick this shoe, um, you know, and sometimes off change it with the Infinity Run. But I think this will be my, you know, priority uh, when it comes to softer recovery long run shoes. So thank you guys for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you guys have this shoe or you already tested it, I would love to hear how you think about it. Is it too soft for you or it's perfect in your opinion? If you guys have any other comments, feedback, or questions, please feel free to leave them down below. Hope you guys are staying safe and your training is going well. And I'll talk to you guys on the next run.